we pushed to get education for our children. And in doing that, we made what's important to white America, made that important in education. Where deep in our own hearts, we know that's not good for our children. Education here on the reservation is difficult for a number of reasons. There's an economic issue in terms of supplies, clothing, transportation. There's, of course, other factors that poverty brings to the table, such as addiction to substances, alcohol, um, and all the other sort of negative things that come with it. Many of our students slip through the cracks. Legend tells Rocko is my name, and then I go to school at one man, and I'm ten. His real name is Legend Tal Tobacco, and so always tease him that he's a storyteller, because if you're riding in the car with him, he'll tell stories, like the entire, wherever you go. It's a good name for him. I don't have my own children, but all of my brothers and sisters have children, and so I've helped them. Guess and tell. Their mom and dad, were heavy drinkers. Their mom, Angie, I mean, she knew she was dying. And then she said she wanted them to live with me, so. So they did after she passed away. She like Tell was whoa, whoa, eight whoa. when that happened. <laughs> I think for him it was a little bit hard after his mom passed away and stuff, but. There's all this trauma that they have to deal with. If you ever heard Faith spotted again, she asked people in, in the audience, how many of you have to deal with uh, an alcoholic relative? But you know, raise your hand so she'll take like a book and set it down. How many of you had um, friends who committed suicide? Pretty soon she'll have this stack. And she said, okay, how can you teach that person about reading and writing if they come to school very much? Our young people, they don't see education as a way out of the system that they're living in. I think it's vital. Education is one necessity. Education is one tool that we desperately need to reverse all of those problems that I mentioned already. Education can do wonders to fix all of those things. And I think it starts there. I just recently graduated from Black Hill State University um, this past May with my Bachelor's of Science in Political Science and American Indian Studies. I am currently working on a master's degree at Ogallala Lakota College in Lakota Leadership and Management. Um, one of the hardest things I came to realize is it's so hard to leave the reservation because your whole support system is down here. The first thing was like yeah. trying to find friends. I couldn't connect with them on that level because they didn't share the similar views as I did. They didn't live a life like I did. My first culture shock was leaving the reservation and landing in San Francisco uh, because it was a completely different world. And uh, a world where people didn't know anything about my culture, my heritage, people who still bought into the Peter Pan complex of Indians as fantasy and myth um, and were dazzled to meet uh, a modern, quote-unquote, modern Indian. It requires a real um, sense of self and sense of uh, being able to teach others about who you are. The students are going to face that. So part of the challenge of education here is to give them the tools so that they can face the opposition, they can face the ignorance with strength and charisma, with the ability to be ambassadors rather than uh, to shut down. Going to school, I was looked at as a Native American woman. Like, I have two things working against me. There were days I was just like, man, I don't know if I can do this anymore. It's so hard. Like, I'm losing family members at home and I can't even go home. What can I do? Like, I can't help.
I'm sorry. But I use that as a drive. Because I am, I get, I do get fired up about it. And I want to help. So it's like, alright, I'm feeling like this. So obviously I need to just keep going that way. I can get home sooner. And I can make a difference. Completing the circle is a concept because the idea is that, you know, we want our graduates to, to leave Red Cloud, to go off, to go, to go to college, and to come back. That was something I was told over and over again growing up was, you have to come back. Uh, that your people are here, your family is here, your home is here, and your responsibility as a Lakota is here. It, it, it's like walking in two worlds. You know, we're, we, we need to be educated about our culture, but we also need this worldly education to survive in the modern world. Building in culture into every facet of education has been doing, I think, wonders. Um, it's why Every school in the area is starting to do that and push for that. And I think that's making a difference. I think it is bringing students into the fold who thought that this education wasn't for them. Uh, and now they're sort of responding positively um, to their culture appearing uh, in curriculum. And when it does that, right, curriculum and education has the power to legitimize something and they're now feeling legitimate as human beings. And be, that, I think, is exactly what we need to do here and what, exactly what these students need um, and what Indigenous education needs as a whole. Education for Indian peoples needs to be legitimate, relevant, important. I'm, I'm not going to see it. I'm not going to see the solution. Uh, my kids won't. My grand, maybe my great grandchildren will. I'm going to have a future beyond this reservation. I don't have to, you know, work at Sioux Nation or at the gas station anymore. You know, I can, I can move on. I can move. I can make myself better, and not just for myself either. It's for my people. Whatever the outcome, I know I just want to make an impact big enough to open the door for others coming up behind me. I always say that even if I can't open the door, at least I can make a scratch and someone else can continue on with that. <laughs>